Welcome. In this video, I'm going to be taking a look at this Foxwell NT716 OBD2 scanner. So this was provided to me by the distributor, but they're not compensating me for this video and they're not reviewing it before I post it. If you find this video helpful and you want to purchase one of these, I'll put a link to it in the description. And if you use that link, it helps me out a little bit and doesn't cost anything extra. So on the side here, we have the specs. You can pause and read through them. So the specs of this are similar to a smartphone. So it runs an Android operating system. So it has a gig of RAM, 32 gig of storage, has a built-in 4,000 milliamp hour battery. This lists some features. It says it works on 90 American, Asian, European vehicle makes. It has automatic VIN reading. You can read and clear codes. It shows live sensor data. It has graphing. You can record and playback data. It does online updating. This also works with TeamViewer, so you can share the screen of this with someone. So that can help you do remote diagnostics. So let's get this open. So here we have a semi-rigid case and a handle. Open this up. Here we have the manual. Let's take a quick look at it. We also have a quick start guide. So this talks about connecting it up. And here's the manual. So you'll want to read through this on your own. I'm just going to do a quick overview of it. So we have some notes there. Here's the table of contents. This talks about the different parts. So we have power switch, USB-C port, USB-A port, diagnostic port. So this charges with USB-C. You can also use it for data transfer. Here we have some more specs. This talks a little about the interface and how to use it. This talks about setting up an account. This talks about updating. This talks about the VIN and VIN reading. This talks about reading codes, clearing codes, graphing. So you can graph multiple parameters and compare them. You can record data. It has different maintenance modes. So you can do like ABS brake bleeding and a parking brake, steering angle sensor, and you can create PDF reports. Okay, so that's a pretty thorough manual. It's, you know, looks about 60 some pages. So lots of good information in there. Then here we have the diagnostic cable. That's around four foot long. So here's a contact card and a USB-C charge cable. So we'll open up this part and here we have the code reader. So there's a little ribbon here to help you pull this out. Set that aside, I'll open this. So this has these rubberized grips on the sides. We have the ports on the top, the power button. Looks like a speaker grill there. We have some kind of specs on the bottom. So that looks pretty straightforward. Let's go ahead and try and power this on. We'll hold down the power button. And it's powering on. Okay, so it's powered up. So here we have a disclaimer. I'll say agree. It says, please create your account first. So I'm going to go through that. I'm going to do that offline so I don't have to blur everything out and then we'll come back. Okay, so I've logged in. When you go through that process, the first thing you'll do is connect up to Wi-Fi. So the battery on this is at 28%. So I am going to charge this. So I'll plug into USB-C and I'll plug into a phone charger. So now we're charging and it's currently charging at 1.45 amps. Now that can vary depending on state of charge. So the first thing I'll do is go to update. So this lists all the updates here. So I just want to hit update all. Now I'm not going to do this right this second. That will take a while. Let's do a quick overview of the interface. I am going to take this out and hook it up to my car, but I can just show a little more detail here on my bench. So we have diagnostics, so we can tap on that and it has different makes and models, but we can hit the little VIN button in the top and it has an automatic read mode. So when you press that, it will automatically try to read the VIN. Now I don't have the cable hooked up yet. And to hook that up, this will go into here. And then you can screw these in, and this end will go into the OBD2 port on your car. So I'll go back here, go back home. Here we have maintenance, and these are the different maintenance modes. So we have ABS service, battery, injectors, oil reset, and such. So there's a number of different maintenance modes. So if I tap on that, it will bring up the car. So I have a Subaru. And I can do smart bin there and it will pull it up and it will give me the tools for doing those maintenance tasks. So I'll go back here. Then we have data manager. So if you save images, graphs, record data, that will show up here. We have my account. So this is where you can log into and out of your account. And then we have settings. Let's take a quick look at this. So we have different settings here like this is the units is metric. I'm going to go with Imperial. You can do your language font size it has things like print settings. Now we can swipe the whole thing over and here we have that remote control. So this will hook up with team viewer. We have firmware update, VCI manager. So that's the OBD2 connector. 
We have auxiliary tools. So that has a file browser. So that allows you to view the files on your system. So it looks like ES File Explorer, if you're familiar with Android phones. So we have coverage list, so you can look up vehicles in there. We have shop manager, and you can set up customers and such in it and store it on the device. So I'm going to go through this update. I'll get it updated. I'll let this charge up, and then we'll head out to the car and test this out. Okay, so we're here at my 2016 Subaru Outback. So under the driver's wheel well, we can find the OBD2 port. So I can plug the cable into that. Now you can see it's kind of a trapezoid shape. So you want to line that up. I'll have to use my other hand. Okay, so I have that plugged in. So I'll plug the other end into the scan tool. I'll tighten these thumb screws down. Okay, so I have the interface up. Now I'm going to turn the car on. I could start it, but it should do what I need just by turning it on. So let's start by doing diagnostic. I'll tap diagnostic and I'll hit VIN in the upper left hand corner and I'll tap automatic read. So this is going to load in the VIN number. So I'll choose North America. Here it has my model and VIN. I'll hit yes. Let's do quick scan. So here we have the report. Under ABS brake control, it has fault two. I'll open that up and it says history, lost communication with the ECM, PCMA, lost communication with EyeSight. So those are historical codes. So I can select these and erase them if I want. I'll just leave them there. They're not hurting anything. Sometimes you may want to erase codes, drive the car again, and see if the codes pop back up. You can do that after you've fixed a problem. So we can save this. So we can save and print, save an email, or just save. So I'll hit save. We can also hit report. This will list it out on one screen. So let's go back. Let's go to control modules. So here we have the different control modules. Let's do ECM engine. It says loading data. We can look at live data. So this is going to have many options here that we can go through. Let's look at main accelerator pedal position. I'll hit okay. So I'll press it on the accelerator and we can see this number going up. Now we're at 100%, back it off. We can also graph this. So if I tap on graph, we can see the baseline here. I'll press it. I'll tap it a few times and make it go up slowly. Now we can look at multiple things. So if we wanted to look at the coolant temp and oxygen sensor, control module voltage, target engine speed, how many things can we choose here? Let's see. Well, we're up to 10. I'm not sure what the limit is, but let's hit OK. So we can see all of these values here. Now it's going to show some of them like the coolant temp because it can measure the coolant temp, it's 46 degrees. The other things might show depending on if the car's running or not, or if it's at a certain temperature or idle speed, things like that. Then we have active test. So this is how we can trigger things. So we have active grill shutter control. Now I don't have this on my car, but if yours did, you could read the directions here. It says put it in park or neutral, vehicle speed stopped, then hit okay and then you could control the active grill. So maybe you think it might be broken, you can go in here and actually actuate it and see if it's moving. So if we go back out of here to the main screen, we can go to maintenance mode, and here we have the different service modes. So we can do ABS service. Let's go to Asia, Subaru, SmartVin. You can choose control modules here, ABS brake control, special functions, and we can go to brake air bleeding. So we can tap on that and go through the procedure for bleeding the brakes. So if we go back to the home screen, we can go to data manager here, we'll go to report, and we have the report that I brought up earlier, so I can tap on it. And I can read through the report for when I scanned it earlier. 
Now, while you're doing this, you could go to that remote control and set up Team Viewer, and you could have another tech look at this while you're looking at it. So that's the Foxwell NT716 code scanner. I only just touched the surface of what you can do with this. All modern controls are going to have computer control on them, and this is getting to be a must-have tool for working on a car. So a tool like this can be great for diagnosing problems. You can use it for reading and clearing codes. So you could use this, for instance, to diagnose an oxygen sensor issue. You could replace the sensor, clear the code, drive it for a little bit, and see if the code comes back up. So if the check engine light came back on, you could hook this back up and see if you're getting the same code. And then you'd have to determine if the part you replaced was faulty or if you misdiagnosed it. But a tool like this is great to have for doing those kind of diagnoses. So that's all I'm going to cover in this video. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. If you like this video, please click like. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, I'd appreciate it if you could do that. And thanks for watching. Until next time, goodbye.